I overlay my wallets, and with the $200 inside, I construct the overlay network. Exceed the Shokan! Come forth. Numbers complete file, piece of memories. Okay, well, clearly this is way too big to fit in my usual camera angle, but let me just try and get it out just like this. This is all that was inside the cardboard, so let me just open this up real quick. Anyways, first we have this black case, it's kind of hard to see, but it basically says number, complete file, piece of memories with a picture of the Emperor's key right in the middle over there. But other than that, it is mostly just completely black on all sides, and just on the back it has the word Konami, as you guys should be able to see from that reflection over there. And on the side we just have numbers, complete file, and blazoned in gold. And I believe this is where we pull out the real binder. Dude, this is so intense, I am super hyped right now. On the front, we have a picture of the Emperor's Key on top of the forbidden door that of course Yuma opens on the very first episode. Let's see, well it typically just looks like a normal binder, but on the back, we actually have this gold uh, outline of Astral, and on the bottom of course the usual credits to the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh hold on, the things inside are like just kind of ready to fall out. So let's just take a look at what's inside, page by page, one by one. Okay. So we start off with like uh, this kind of just a plastic cutout page I think. In gold text we have the voice lines of the Emperor's door. Whoever opens this door will gain a new power. However, as the cost, that person will lose their most important thing. Okay, so that is just a, I guess a plastic cutout for decoration there. Then next we just have a page of... Wow, that look, whatever's behind there looks pretty interesting. But first we just have a packet full of like pages of 3x3 slots for the binder. So let's just put that aside for now. And first up, well rather than first up, this is literally all that's left because the binder ends right there. So you know what, let's put the real binder, the full binder aside for now and put this stuff down here. So in the middle, we have a model of Yuma's pendant which is really cool. It doesn't look like it comes with a chain to like sort of like wear it in the way Yuma does though. So I wonder if it's just standalone. Okay, let's take a closer look at this dude. This is so cool. Man, as a Zale fan, this is just irresistible. Oh my god. That is seriously epic, man. I just love the way it looks and the glint is just awesome. Bringing back all those nostalgia and memories of XC summoning and the numbers. There is this hook over here though, so clearly it should be worn as a pendant. I'm not sure if there's a chain hidden somewhere in here. We'll take a look at that later, but for now let's put it to the side. Anyway, on top we can see three anime exclusive cards that are being printed for the first time in this set that were used by Dawn Thousand and well, not exactly the finale but near the end of Zale and they are basically each a stack of cards. So let's take them out first and maybe we'll go through them one by one but just uh, to simplify, to start with, on the right we have New Maron Chaos Ritual and on the left over here we have numbers, well, Chaos Numbers 1000 first, Numeronis. Numeronius I mean, but we'll take a closer look at him later. Followed by Chaos Imaginary Numbers 1000, Numeronius Numeronia. And I just realized right behind Numeronius was this little packet over here, which seems to be the pendant string for wearing with the Emperor's Key. Yep, so you can just hook it to the back of the Emperor's Key like this and wear it as a pendant. Pretty nice. But as nice as the pendant is, that's not what you guys are here for, right? Now let's take a look at our complete set of numbers. Now I've taken a glance at the cards in each pile, so I've figured out the order already. But first we'll take our special imaginary numbers uh, promos and put them to the side so we can take a look at them at the end. You know what? I'll put them next to the Emperor's Key over here so that we don't forget them. Okay, now let's start by taking a look at this complete set of numbers with everything in, uh, well, not everything, but the main numbers, at least in ultra rare. Zoom in complete. Starting off, we have the true numbers 1 to 4, used by Dawn Thousand in the anime, the new Maron Gates, Ekum, Duve, your names are a bit hard to pronounce, so pardon me if I get anything wrong, Truni, and finally, Chaturvari. Next, numbers 5, Death Chimera Dragon. 
which is something we didn't see in the anime, right? We only saw Vector use the Chaos form, which was what? Chaos Chimera Dragon? And he has number 6, Chronomaly Atlantle, one of my favorite numbers from the anime because it is just so freaking badass, man. Next, number 7, Lucky Stripe. This was used against that gambler guy who had like all the luck in the world and he was just rolling 6s, right? In order to get the best effects of this guy's dice rolling effects. Number 8, Genome Heritor. Used by Tron, the father 3, 4, and 5, and although not the final, I'd say probably the key or main antagonist of the first season of Zale. A pretty strong Xyz monster, especially back in the day with an ability to basically steal the names and effects of opposing uh, Xyz monsters, and of course, here we have one of the most freaking epic Xyz monsters from the anime, the gigantic number 9, Tengai Sei, Dyson Sphere. Dude, when this guy appeared in the battle against uh, between 5 and Kaito, that was just the most insane thing ever, and I just love like the... The, the part in season the part in season 2 when Kaito and 5 teams up against uh, one of the fake numbers users and then it was like the battle of the biggest numbers against the smallest uh, well fake number at least the mosquito one number 10 Illuminite known in Japanese as the white shining uh, night illuminator uh, this guy <laughs> I've honestly never really understood I mean his points that much he just kind of lets you draw Number 11, Big Eye, and this is of course a very well-known card if you played Yu-Gi-Oh! well, even remotely competitively back during the Zale days when this guy first came out with his ability to steal control of the opponent's monsters. Number 12, Crimson Shadow. I remember this one was used and uh, was featured in the anime as well, but honestly I don't remember too much about it. Number 13, number 13, Kane's Devil. Now this is one of a pair of two numbers that were exclusive to the Zale manga, which I have not read yet, so I'm not too familiar with what exactly they do. Number 14, Sarameya of Great Desire. This one I think is an uh, or, uh, OCG original. And of course, to match up with the current 4 raid duel event in Duel Links, which I've grinded so hard just to make a complete gimmick puppet deck, here we have numbers 15, Gimmick Puppet, Giant Killer. And I don't care that his English TCG name is Giant Grinder, I just think that kind of censorship is just kind of banal and dumb, he will always be Giant Killer to me. Number 16, Shock Ruler. Number 17, Revised Dragon or Leviathan Dragon in the TCG. Of course, this one is a number that anyone who's watched Zale will know appearing in the very first episode used by Shark. Number 18, this I think is an OCG exclusive heraldry uh, Xyz monster. Plain Coats, I don't remember seeing this guy in the anime. Number 19, Freezer Dawn, which of course is the, well, I guess I consider him kind of like the brother of Magmazaurus, which uh, Yuma and Shark had to team up with, to, to team up to defeat. Number 20, Giga Brilliance, a rank 3, which has the ability to give your monsters a 300 attack boost. Number 21, Lady Justice. I seem to recall that she belonged to the manga, but this is another one that I'm not too familiar with. Number 22, Zombie Stein, or at least in the TCG. In the OCG, he is simply Franken. And I think this guy appeared in the manga as well. I am desperately still trying to pull him from the latest main box in Duel Links because he works so well in the gimmick puppet deck. Number 23, Lancelot. Now this guy is, I know is clearly from the manga. He used to be a promo that comes together with buying one of the manga volumes. I think pretty strong as a rank 8 monster. Next we have the Vampiric Dragon, Dragulas. Kind of like Dracula but with dragon. Number 25, Focus Force. It was used by that camera guy I clearly remember from the anime. Number 26, uh, what is this? The Dimensional Circuit Octo, Octo Bypass. I think this guy has an effect which what? It banishes a monster temporarily and then it comes back, right? Or something to do with direct attacking. Next, number 27, Dreadnought, another OCG exclusive one. Oh, sorry. When I say OCG exclusive, I don't mean like just the Japanese card game, but I mean to the card game in general and not appearing in any other media like the anime or manga. And this guy is a... Uh I think he's basically designed as a support for Anna's deck where basically if he manages to defeat an opponent's monster by battle, he can just rank up all the way to one of like Anna's crazy high rank machine time monsters. Number 28, Titanic Moth. This I feel was belonged to the manga. Number 29, Man Mannequin Cat. 
Number 30, Acid Golem. So basically the XC's version of Lava Golem, man. Acid Golem of Destruction. Hamitsu no Acid to Golem. Next we have numbers 31, Abel's Devil, in order to pair with Kane's Devil earlier. <laughs> numbers 32, Kaikoryu, Shark Drake. Dude, so this is just, I guess, Shark's ace number from the first season, which eventually got a Chaos Xyz change as well. It is just so freaking cool. I love the depth, die, depth bites a finisher of like, bringing back the opponent's monster just to punish them for more damage. Numbers 33, Chronobily, Machu Mac and I just really love the Chronomaly archetype as a whole, so this is awesome. He's uh, used by three in the current Duel Links event, I think, but he never this one never was used in the anime. Number 34, Terabytes. This was used by that short uh, glasses kid before he became one of Yuma's friends. Allows you to steal control of the opponent's level 4 or lower monsters. Number 35, Ravenous Tarantula. Yes, so similar to Titanic Moth, this is also from the manga, I believe, used by the same guy. Number 36, for Kyuk, so this is a very strong numbers that goes very well with Machu Man. Because this one, if I remember correctly, this is the one that reduces the one opposing, opposing monster's attack to zero while negating its effects. And then, since the attack of that monster has changed, you can make use of Machu Mech to absorb the difference and inflict damage to the opponent. Number 37, Hope Woven Spider Shark. So this is a manga card that kind of basically represents the bond between Shark and Yuma. So that's why Hope is in the name. Number 38, we have another one, Titanic Galaxy. This one represents the bond between Kaito and Yuma in the manga. <laughs> Number Sanju Q, Kibo Hope. And of course, man, of course. But like, I mean, it's awesome getting another copy of him, but I can't be too hyped about this because I literally have like 10 copies of this guy in differing rarities already. Numbers 40, Gimmick Puppet. Heaven Strings with a pretty solid effect. I mean, the only downside is that you can easily just bomb him with like, he has no effect protection at all. And of course, to me, this guy will always be Heaven Strings. I don't really care for the TCG name, Gimmick Puppet of Strings, like what even is that? Numbers 41, Baguska. So this is a new rank 4 exclusive to the card game, and I kind of like this one. He has a pretty cool effect, stunning effect, which turns monsters to defense position, and while they're in defense, they lose their effects. Number 42, Starship Galaxy Tomahawk. I've used this guy before, but in very few decks, so I think he has some kind of effect which produces a bunch of like galaxy tokens, sort of, right? Numbers 43, Soul Marionette. This one I clearly remember was used by Vector in Season 2 as one of the rank 2. And of course, number 44, Huckton Mop, Sky Pegasus. So this is one of the legendary numbers that they were searching for in Season 2. This one is the one that, uh, What's his name again? Dubel, the second in command of the Baryan Emperors. Uh, this guy kind of represents him because he used to be a Nash's knight. Numbers 45, the Prophet of Destruction, Crumble Logos. Now this is a number I'm honestly not too familiar with. Number 46, Dragulong, of course, another of the legendary ones. Number 47, Nightmare Shark. And numbers 48, Shadow Lich. This one I think is another manga one. Okay, so we're finally done with the first pile, which Let's put to the side so that we don't, you know, accidentally topple the entire pile by causing it to become too tall. Let's take a look at the second one. Numbers 49, Fortune Chun, rank 3 bird. I think this was from one of the premium packs. Number 50, Blackcorn, the Blackcorn ship. Number 51, Finish Hold. Okay, I think this should be another card game exclusive one. This is a number I honestly feel like I've never seen before. Number 52, Diamond Crab King. I think this is a manga one, a rank 4. Number 53, Heart Earth. Basically used by Dr. Faker in the final battle of Season 1 when he was being possessed essentially by Vector. Numbers 54, Lion Heart. And dude, this guy just brings back so much nostalgia for me because uh, this guy is the legendary numbers that basically corresponds to, who is it? Uh, Gilan? Gilans? Is that his name? The really buff Baryan Emperor? And like, this guy was one of the cover numbers of like the Numbers Hunter pack, which was like the, one of the most hyped things for me as a Yu-Gi-Oh collector and Zale fan back in the Zale days. That was just awesome. And it was used in his duel against the Heroic Champion user, I think. Number 55, Go 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 Goliath! Yes, the Goliath rank 4 Xyz monster. But I honestly not too familiar with this one. When I was playing Go Go Go, this guy hadn't been released yet. Number 56, Gold 
regrets one of uh, Kaito's early easy numbers that he hunted. Number 57, Treslagoon. Treslagoon, okay, not too familiar with this one either. Number 58, Burner Visor. So this one, it's like, it can become an equip, right? If I'm not wrong, it was used by one of the Baran Emperors. Number 59, uh, Beck the Cook, right. That was his name. <laughs> number 60, Dugares. Now another number that I am not very familiar with. Number 61, oh right, not Magmasaurus, Volcasaurus, right. Am I confusing the TCG name, the OCG name? I can't remember what his TCG name is. But yeah, honestly, like this is super high for me because I think he's on my numbers backlog. I just never managed to get the original one. Number 62, Galaxia Ice Prime Photon Dragon from that literal battle on the moon. Number 63, Oshamoji Soldier, a rank one. Number 64, yeah, so what was this guy called again? Furu Tanuki San Sandayu, right. So this was the legendary number, oh wait. Isn't this Gilan's legendary number? Not. Oh right, I got confused a bit. This guy is Gilek's Lionheart belongs to Alito, right? The burning boxer user. Right, okay. Number 65, Judge Buster. So this one is the legendary numbers for Vector. Pretty cool. I didn't know he was right after Gilat. Number 66, Master Key Beetle. So this is a pretty nice rank 4. I just really like the design and back in the old days, you know, I just bring this guy out if I had some spare materials in order to help protect my hope. Number 67, Paradise Smasher. Okay, this one I have no clue. Number 68, Sandalfon. Now this one I think is another card game exclusive. Number 69, God Coat. The Heraldry God, Coats of Arms. So this was the final trump card used by Tron in Season 1. Number 70, Deadly Sin, manga exclusive and it's something I'm using quite often in Duel Links as well. Number 71, Rivarian Shark. If I remember correctly, this is a card game exclusive numbers that was created to kind of just generally support a Shark or Nash's deck. Number 72, Line Monster, Chariots Hisha. I think this is a manga exclusive because I think there was a duelist in a manga that basically used the Lion Monster archetype and that's one of them. Number 73, Abyss Splash. Now this is the legendary numbers for Shark, Nash himself. Number 74, Magical Crown Missing Sword. Or at least that's the OCG name and I seem to recall that the TCG name is something completely different. But another numbers I recognize. Number 75, Gossip Shadow, this one I have no idea honestly. Number 76, Gradiel. Now this is another number that I have no clue about. Number 77, The Seven Sins. Now this is one of the sickest numbers based on design, it's from the manga as well. I'm honestly still hoping to pull a, a secret rare version of this guy from the premium pack where he's available, but this is really nice to get an ultra rare version of him. Number 78, Numbers Archive. Wait a minute. Is this some generic numbers support numbers? <laughs> numbers support numbers. I'm not too... I feel like this guy appeared, but I don't really remember it that well. Number 75... Burning Nunkler, Shinsei no Kaiser. Yes, now this one I think card game exclusive support for Burning Nunkler. Number 80, all oh right, Rhapsody in Berserk. Now this was used by Alitz, I think, in the arena battle against Yuma when I think he came back after being defeated once already and then he has the new red shirt kind of like uh, brainwashed by Vector a bit is that what happens? It's been so long but I think this guy was like another like a support or like equipped for his main deck number 81 Superior Dora so we're coming to the well massive giant high rank monsters number 82 Heartland Draco so I think this is used by Mr. Heartland in the manga, if I'm not wrong. Number 83, Galaxy Queen, used by, uh, not Esper Roba, but the other Esper that appears in Zale, that I think is kind of a homage to Esper Roba, and well, that's his mom, right, <laughs> basically. Number 84, uh, Pain Gainer, so this is to pair with the spider user in the manga. Number 85, Crazy Box. Number 86, of course, Heroic Champion, Rongo Mians card game exclusive uh, heroic boss and I just absolutely love his effect of being able to use multiple numbers or uh, as many level 4 uh, warrior type monsters as you like and the more you have the more insane this guy's effects basically gets I just love that and just going with like you know heroic uh, challenger sparta 
I mean, Sparchar is like not the best card, but I just love the reference in him. Next, we have number 87, Queen of Knights. So a number that I see quite often, but I personally am not too familiar with. Number 88, Gimmick Puppet, Destiny Leo, with the ability to end the duel. Okay, next, number is 89, Diablosis. What are you? Strangely enough, his name seems to apply his like cyberspace support, but from his effect, I guess not. Numbers 90, Galaxiai's Photon Lord. Oh, there was such a card. I don't remember this at all. Like back in the days when I played Galaxiai's. This guy's probably new, I'm assuming. Number 91, a uh, Thunder Spark Dragon. This one I'm quite familiar with, have used quite a lot. Number 92, Heart Earth Dragon, the transform mode of Heart Earth. Next, number 93, Hope Kaiser, a new, uh, very high rank Hope monster. I think it's, uh, what is it? Right, rank 12, but instead of using level 12 monsters, you basically exceed summon him out using a numbers monsters of the same rank. Number 94, Crystal Zero, uh, this is Rio's legendary numbers. Followed by number 95, Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon, a pretty solid card. If I'm not wrong, this guy has been hit, right? Like somewhere on the ban list, whether it's a forbidden or limited. Number 96, Black Mist. So this is used by the dark version of Astral. And this guy just has so many feels for me because I managed to pull uh, his Chaos no version, Chaos number 2, what was it? Dark Smog? I'm sure we'll be seeing him soon, uh, directly from the pack where he appeared, which had a lot of support for dark attribute monsters. And now, we are finally making our way to the final stack. Okay, number 97, Draglabion. This one is like, where was this guy from exactly? Numbers 98, ah yes, this is a number that I never managed to get, even though it's so freaking cool. It was like, it's like some exclusive promo to some item, right, that I didn't really buy. Zetsubo or the Lord of, or King of Despair, Hope. Less. Oh my god, it is so freaking cool. I love the design. It's even cooler than Hope. Next, we have number 99, of course, a Kibo Hope Ryu, the Kibo Hope Dragon. Hope Dragoon, used by Astral in his final match against Yuma. That he had to rank up with what? Was it Ultimate Force? Well, basically, he had some crazy rank up magic he had. And number 100, Numeron Dragon. Nice, in order to tie. All the 99 drag, uh, all the 99 numbers together, and with that we have reached number one to 100. We are going into the over 100 numbers, which, as you can see, in order to signify your like allegiance to the Bar and Emperors, they come in a different kind of rarity, ultra rare red, where the name is colored in red. Numbers: Hyakuichi, Silent Honors, Ark, Naito. And okay, it looks like we're going in numerical order, not putting the chaos right after the normal. Numbers 102, Holy Lightning, Glorious Halo. I love this guy. I just love the fact that the archetype's name is Holy Lightning and it's just a literal floating chair, literal floating sword, flowing scale, and they just combine and become like crazy shit. Numbers 103, Ragnar Zero. Numbers 104, Masquerade Magician, Shining. Oh, I think out of the over 100 numbers, this is probably the one I am least typed about. Or, or I guess it's like a tie between this guy and Giant Hand. Numbers 105, Burning Knuckler, Ruseno Cestis. Numbers 106, Giant Hand. Oh. Oh my god. Like, when this thing, this Beast, this freaking cool ass abomination first appeared in the anime. It's like, I am freaking gonna buy a box of Lord of Tachyon Galaxy and get this guy. And in my very first pack, I got this guy in Ultimate Rare. And that just, that was the beginning, man. Like, I love Galaxy Eyes, but it's nothing compared to Tachyon. Like, seriously. The only reason I don't play him is because there isn't like a, a Tachyon deck. Like, there is a Photon deck for. Galaxy Eyes Photon, Numbers Hyakunana, Gyaraxi Eyes, Tachyon Dragon. Nice, dude. And here we go, into the Chaos Numbers. Chaos Numbers 1, Gate of Numeron Chaos. Uh, Gate, I mean Gate of Chaos Numeron, Shenunia. Don Thousand, 
Chaos number 5, a Chaos Chimera Dragon. We got a bunch of these that literally just become a, have chaos in your name. Chaos number 6, Chaos Atlantal. Oh my god, I'm losing my voice. Chaos number 9, Chaos Dyson Sphere. Gimmick puppets, a serial killer. Yeah, at least for 4 for his gimmick puppets that are so full of flavor at the very least although the designs are like literally just a bit of chaos and gold in them at least the names are like super cool when they go chaos number chaos numbers 32 shark drake vice num chaos 39 hope ray chaos number 39 hope ray v my ve when I first converted from the TCG to OCG, the very first set that I got was the Hope Ray V starter deck. Chaos number 39, Hope Ray Victory. And of course, the moment I pulled this guy from my box of where this guy came out from, I instantly put him in there. Chaos number 40, Gimmick Puppet Devil Strings. Reversing Heaven. Chaos numbers 43, Chaos Marionetter. Chaos number 65, this is one of the chaos numbers that I just absolutely love the design from, especially from the anime. Judge Devil, from Judge Buster to Judge Devil. Chaos number 69, Chaos of Arms. Chaos number 73, Abyss Supra, another one used by Nash in the anime. Chaos numbers 80, from Rhapsody to Requiem in Berserk to mark the end of the opponent's life. Chaos number 88, Gimmick Puppet Disaster Leo. Now this guy is just... Man, insane. Design, effects, everything, name. I just absolutely love the Gimmick puppets. Chaos numbers 92, Heart of Chaos Dragon, I think... Uh, was this actually used by Dr. Faker in the anime? I don't think so, right? He just went up the Heart of Dragon. Next, Chaos numbers 96. This is what I was talking about earlier. Oh, I guess it's not Black Smog, it's Black Storm. An even more fitting name. And here we go, the Chaos over 100 numbers often coming from Baryan Chaos Draw into Rank Up Magic, the seventh one. Chaos numbers Hyakuichi, Silence Honors, Dark Knight. Followed by Chaos numbers Hyakuni, Holy Lightning, Noble Demon from a full light. You think this archetype is like about angels, holy, well, yellow, light attribute, and kind of stuff, and then suddenly their final boss turns out to be like a holy demon, the mo most badass shit ever. Chaos numbers Hyakusan, Regna Infinity from 0 to Infinity. Chaos numbers Hyakuyon, Masquerade Magician, Umbra. Not too much a fan on the design. Chaos numbers, Hyakugo. Sweet Seino from Cestus to Kaistus. Love that shit. I'm sorry, I realize I'm speaking a lot of Japanese today, but when it comes to Zale, I have to. Chaos numbers, Hyakuroku. Giant Hand Red. Chaos numbers, Hyakunana. Neo Galaxia is Tachyon Dragon. But honestly, I don't really care about this guy. Like, it's just, Neo Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon is such a markup on the design, like, you know, it like kind of like reverses the bluish photonish color and it inverts it to some kind of like red with a bit of chaos, you know, that kind of feel. But Galaxy Eyes Tarkin Dragon is literally like, grow two more hits and turn gold. So, never been much of a fan on this one, honestly. Back to Normal Ultramares, number 39, Hope Roots from the Rank Down Magic. Numbers 39, Hope, the Beyond, a Beyond the Hope. Numbers 39, Double Hope, or Hope Double. Shining numbers 39 from the number, Hope 1. Shining numbers 39, Hope, the Lightning, uh, kind of a bit of a staple if you run Hope. Easy, uh, you know, easy 5k hits. Shining number zero, uh, zero, Hope, Zale. Now honestly, like, I'm not too much a fan on these guys, because it's literally just putting Yuma and Astral in their Zale form as a card. Future number zero, Mirayo Hope. And these guys come in ultra rare blue. <laughs> yes, they just had to. Future number zero, Mirayo Hope, Future Slash. Uh, honestly, not too big of a fan on these cards, which like, per parts, which are like just the same guy, but using their attack and suddenly becoming a brand new card. Future number zero, uh, 
Mirai Viewer Hope, the future Dragon King Hope. And now we have a bunch of cards that I actually didn't know were included in this set. It seems to be just some random support cards for numbers, I guess. But probably more for like the Yuma numbers deck, you know? And here we have the Creator of Hope. Very nice. That's kind of like... Uh, well, it's... I would like to say Yuma, but he kind of has the hairstyle of, Z of their Zale form. And then here we have, ah, the formula to victory. So this is one of uh, Astral's uh, signature catchphrases from the anime. Oh wait! Yes, this is Zale 1, this is Zale 2, and this is Zale 3, the creator of miracles. That is such a nice transition. That is pretty cool. Okay, so with that, we've basically seen all the cards in this set. We still have just those three uh, Dawn Thousand cards left, so let me just give you guys a good look at them before we end today's video. So let's start off with this one. First we have the Numeron Chaos Ritual, followed by... yeah, oh wait, this one first. Chaos Numbers 1000, Dawn Thousand's final signature numbers, Numeronius, and ranking up into Chaos Imaginary Numbers 1000, Numeronius, Numeronia. And with that, we have finally gone through this entire set of the Numbers Complete File, Piece of Memory. I am super exhausted from hyping over all of these numbers, so just let me wrap up real quick. If you're as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. Let me know what you guys think about this awesome set in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG, Booster Box, and product openings on the day of release. With that, I'll see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video.